Let's read from the book of Acts 1 8. <clears throat> I know uh, we have memorized Acts 1 8, so, uh, but I'd like us to just look in the Bible as we recite it together. Uh, let's start. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Amen. Um, I keep saying morning, uh, it's already past 12, so good afternoon. Um, I will share very briefly because um, I know you're getting ready to, you know, to prepare for ministry and other things. Um, we really have to um, hold on to very important things uh, through the world today. So what is not working? Um, there's a few things I'd like us to look at uh, this morning. Um, when things don't work in, in, in your life, it's because of um, these three things. The fundamentals. And because of, let me just use here, um, because of the basics. These things have to be right for everything uh, to take place in life. And then the third thing that we can also look at because uh, you've already received these messages, is the foundation, because of the foundation too. They look all the same, right? Yeah, fundamentals, basics, foundation. Actually, it's the same thing. But when you say, when you talk about fundamentals, uh, let's say oh, that person has no fun you know, fundamentals, or that person's fundamentals are really bad. Basically, you're speaking about the spiritual things. The spiritual things. So say, uh, he has no fundamentals. Of course, not, not, that's when people say that, but we're talking about the spiritual things. Those are the fundamentals. But don't say, that, oh, this person has no basics. Uh, what are we talking about at that moment? We're talking about his life. Especially in Korean, this is used very much. Achasaramo kibonokta. <laughs> you know, has no basics. So it looks like the same thing, but the fundamentals talks more about the spiritual things. But the basics talks more about the life of that person, the lifestyle of the person. But what is foundation? Uh, foundation could be something like um, maybe... I'd like to say prayer here because it's talking, about, it's talking about your ability, the power to do something. That is your foundation to do something. For us, it's prayer. I don't know what it is for non-believers, but it has to be prayers if you have received the gospel. Uh, so <clears throat> why are things not working? Sometimes people ask these questions. Why is it not working in my life? Um, if these three things are in place, that's, why, uh, that's when things will actually begin to take place uh, in your life. Right now, there are so many like, you know, newcomers, you know, uh, new believers. Um, before anything else, uh, these three things must be set right. That's why we have this training. You, know, you, you might wonder, we have the 2 p.m. service, we have the 3.30 service. Why do I have to go to the 12.30 uh, training as well? It's because uh, through training, these things can be set right only through training. That's why uh, for those of you who are able to you know, come to training, I, I think you've received uh, even greater blessings. And today is a rainy day and uh, you know, normally when the weather is so nice, people are like, ah, should I go or not? But if it's raining, just wake up and know, ah, today I'm not going. It's raining. So d during rain, they're not even co conflicting. They're not like worrying, should I go to church or not? They're not worrying like that. If it's raining, set, I'm not going. It's like that. Because I was like that too. <laughs> yeah. So, but when the weather is so good, ah, should I go or not? But if it's raining, absolutely, it's, it's already like set automatically. So, for, for all of you who have come, uh, even beginning to the training, may you receive uh, one thousand generation of grace. Amen. <laughs> yeah, one thousand fold of blessings. It's because the gospel, uh, the gospel is complete, and the gospel is sufficient in itself. It's not lacking in any way. 
But what, has, what, is this funda what is this fundamentals? Is it helping poor people? Is it, um, is it um, doing charity? Is, is, are, are those the spiritual fundamentals? Um, yesterday, those who, are, those who came here, you really saw accurately. You know, I was happy some of you, you know, were able to come. That is the field that I'm going to. <laughs> it is exactly like that. So, I, I really hope that you're able to organize some important prayer topics uh, to pray for, uh, you know, for that field. Because that is the field itself, you know, the actual reality in the field. I don't know how people are able to do that. To do all things, but so nicely and so wisely, just going around, escaping the mystery of Christ. You need a lot of um, you need a lot of strength to do that <laughs> to speak about everything. But it's like you are just trying to miss out on Christ on purpose. That's what I felt. That is the fundamentals, Christ. Uh, we say the true prophet, priest, and king. But that is everything, actually. That is everything. As the true prophet, the way to meet God, there is no any other way to meet God. That is why this is the fundamental. This, this is the start of everything. As the true priest, he took away of all our sin, our curses, our disasters, all our problems. He finished all of them. As the true king, he is the one that completely crushed down the power of Satan. That is the fundamentals. kingdom of God. I explained this yesterday, I think in Shinwal. Um, even I, I think I explained uh, to Mariana and, you know, when I, when I visited the, the, their company. Kingdom of God. Can you imagine a king comes to you with his old kingdom to you? It's different from when the king calls you to the palace. That is different. But this is a king that he did not just come alone with his bodyguard. He came with his whole kingdom to us. So I took an example with Queen Elizabeth. Can you imagine Queen Elizabeth moving his, his kingdom <laughs> from wherever it is right now and brings the kingdom here in Seoul uh, because I want to be with you guys. I love you guys so much. I want to be with you. He brings the entire kingdom here. It's impossible, but... That's what Jesus did. He brought the kingdom of God in your heart. He brought the kingdom of God in your life. That is why, uh, you know, when you say that problem is not a problem, it's because of this, these two things. What can be a problem? Christ finished everything already. More than, more than you can imagine, I think a lot of people really don't believe in God. Me too, you know, you too. We don't really believe in God. That's why it is by grace. Amen? So we have to receive grace because with our real nature, we cannot believe in God. It's impossible to believe in God. That is why God has given us grace so that we may believe in the gospel. Uh, such an amazing blessing. That is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, dwelling in your life. The Holy Spirit dwelling in your life. Um, I really want all of you to have a clear understanding about this. Sometimes people talk about uh, the feeling of the Holy Spirit like this. Even for, for the new believers, maybe uh, can take this moment to understand. It's like a jar, you know. They understand the feeling of the Holy Spirit from this pers you know, perspective. When they feel when they go to worship and they feel excited and they feel strengthened, they say, oh, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. But when they worship and they don't feel excited or they don't feel somehow what, you know, I don't know how to explain, they feel, oh, I, wasn't, I didn't receive grace, I wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit, they say like that. And so they measure the Holy Spirit according to the strength that is, that is in them. So when they feel weak and have no strength, they say, oh, I need feeling of the Holy Spirit. 
But when they feel strong and they're doing things on their own, they don't say, I need the feeling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not like a power that charges you. It's not like a battery, you know, a four, 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 you know phone uh, power when, oh, 20%. Oh, where's the charger? That's not the feeling of the Holy Spirit. The feeling of the Holy Spirit is being filled with the Word of God. It's being filled with Christ. It's being filled with Christ. Uh, that is why when you receive the Word of Christ, whether you understand it or not, just say Amen, Amen, Amen. It's okay. <laughs> because you're filling your heart with the Word of Christ. You may understand now or later, it's okay. But you just need to say Amen and just keep hearing the Word of Christ. Just have to keep hearing the Word of Christ. That's why even if you're so tired and you don't, wanna, you don't feel like going to church, just come and sleep there in the church. Sleep during the, the praise and everything. But when the word is being proclaimed, open your eyes and listen to the word. <laughs> even that is okay. Though it's, it's not really okay, but even that is okay. <laughs> so, feeling of the Holy Spirit is when you feel... Uh, let me maybe use some uh, easy words. Is when you are, is when you are, w when you understand God's kingdom in your life more. That is the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yesterday, I, this is how much I understood God's kingdom and the blessing of Christ in my life. But today, I think I understand a little bit more. And today, I think I enjoy a little bit more. That is the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Whether you are you're feeling excited or not, when you think you're rooting down more deeper in the gospel. That is the feeling of the Holy Spirit. That is why this song, when I first came into the gospel, about 10 years ago, I was singing this song. I didn't know how to pray. I mean, how could I pray? For me, if you ask me to pray, I would go, Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, blah, 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 like that. That's, that's the prayer that I knew. So, and I didn't want to pray like that. I just wanted to pray covenant prayer. But I don't know how to pray. So I just sang this song. Oh Lord, would you fill my soul with your spirit? And fill me to the whole. I was asking God to fill me with the word of Christ. I'm still praying the same prayer even now. Um, when you say basics, um, when you say basics, talking about the life, the life of that person. What is in your life? Imprints. Imprints. There's... There's a brother who received Jesus Christ. Um, this is a long time ago in, in Kenya, and he was a, a Seventh Day Adventist. But after receiving Jesus Christ, he still kept asking me about worshiping on Saturday or on Sunday. I said, "Worship every day, then, if you want. You know, what do you want to just take one day in and worship on that particular day? Worship every day. Oh, but is, is in Saturday, the, you know, the Lord's Day? Is the Lord's, even Monday is the Lord's Day." Even Tuesday is the last day. So whose, whose day is it? Wednesday. Is it Saturn's day? <laughs> and, 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 and Thursday, my day? No. Say it. Every day is the Lord's day. Yeah. If you really, really you know, grab the essence of the gospel. Whether you worship at night or worship in the morning, actually it doesn't matter. Even if you worship at 1 a.m. and you finish at 3 a.m., it's okay if people can come. What's the problem about that? Even if you worship sitting down or standing or even sleeping down on the floor, what's the problem? But he could, he could not really uh, comprehend what I was saying because of the imprinted uh, wrong ideologies that were imprinted in his heart. If you really want to just follow the, what the Bible says accurately, actually Saturday is right. Saturday. We should be coming in Saturday and worship on Saturday. We should do that. But because in the Old Testament, that's what they did. And God rested on the seventh day, which was Saturday. Not the first day, which is Sunday. But if you come to the New Testament, the believers gathered on the first day of resurrection. And that's, why they, that's why the Sabbath was now the first day of the week, not the seventh day. Now the concept is completely changed. In the Old Testament, you suffer for six days in the field, and then on the seventh day you come and receive God's and then you repent for your unbelief. But now the concept is different. Before we begin our week, we gather, we receive spiritual strength, we hold on to the word, and then now we go to the six days. I think I like Sunday better than Saturday. Why? Because in the New Testament, the Christians did that. They gathered on the resurrection day, on the day that Christ resurrected. That's the seventh day now. So the first day is now the Sabbath. 
according to um, the New Testament. But things don't work because of the imprints, uh, because of the roots, because of the roots, because of your nature. Is it last week? I think in Shinol, when I, I think we shared from Matthew 16, from verse 13 to 20, and I explained about legalism, unhealthy mysticism, or religion, uh, you know, good works and other things like that. Uh, sometimes that is in, in your nature. Some people have this nature of legalism. They always see the wrong things. If I look at uh, my brother here, mi hermano and Cristo, <laughs> if I look at him, I can see so, I, I see so many good things. You know, look, he's really handsome, right? And he's really smart, and he's very kind, and I can see so many good things. But if I was legalistic, I would only try to look at the wrong things. Thankfully, I don't see any wrong thing with me right now. But if I had the nature of legalism, I'd not look at the good things. I would only see the, the wrong things. So legalistic people like that. And then we have the nature of unhealthy mysticism. Yeah. When they just want to feel something physically, oh, they want to see something. They just want to touch something. That's unhealthy mysticism. And then you have the good works and, you know, uh, etc. But um, these things may change or not, but they can be your platform. So it's not necessarily that they have to change, but if you really hold on to the basics, uh, to the fundamentals, the spiritual things, God will make this into a platform for you to receive answer. God can make them into a pedestal. The things that are imprinted in your heart, yeah, God can change them or not. That is all upon God. We can't force him, oh, change my imprints. In fact, if you look in uh, the book of um, 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, you are a new creation. All this doesn't really matter. The imprints, root, nature, doesn't really matter. You are a new creation in Christ. But if you don't hold to the fundamentals, somewhat, because of these things, you lose out so many blessings of God. You can't even evangelize. That is why God has changed all that into a platform uh, to enjoy the gospel. And then finally, because of time, your foundation. When you say foundation, you're talking about your prayer. Your prayer. Your ability. Uh, don't just pray. I'm going to write them here because you cannot see them. But do the covenantal prayer. Don't just pray. Do the covenant prayer. What is covenant prayer? It's a prayer concerning this. It's a prayer concerning this. We saw that two weeks ago. Let your kingdom come. That is the first prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come. And so on and so forth. So, uh, throughout this week, I really wish that all of us you know, will be able to pray with this prayer. Of Acts 1.8. Uh, you see God changing things in your life. Um, you're praying for world evangelization. Our sister um, Mariana's name, second, her family name is um, Evangelist. Her name is Mary Evangelist, if you say that in English. Yeah, evangel evangelista. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I was in your family too. <laughs> Get the you know the same name. It's a wonderful name, I think. And I think uh, now with the gospel, even our sister Mariana has now restored uh, the true meaning of her name. Amen. Yeah, the true meaning of your name. Yeah. So when you pray, just do the covenant prayer, and then we have uh, this blessing. Uh, it's the same thing too. World evangelization or evangelism, uh, they sound as the same thing, but I've on purpose put this here for one reason. It is your today's time schedule, this now. Yeah. What is God's plan for brother? Um, here is through him, 
for that field of Elim school to be saved. That is God's plan. That's, w that's why now, right now, he is in Elim school. Yeah. What is God's plan for Sister Mona? It's through her, for all foreigners in Yongsangu Yong <laughs> to be saved. There's a lot of foreigners there. What is God's plan and God's purpose for this church? It is to save the dying English field out there. And if we really grab all of this covenant as the pulpit message and the New Year's message, uh, my plan and my purpose shall surely stand. You'll be able to experience that in your life, that God using you to fulfill his purpose, uh, God using you to fulfill his plan uh, in your life. Okay, um, let us take a time to pray again. And, and, and this time, we're going to pray with um, these three things. Um, just in conclusion, uh, you have to concentrate here. You have to focus on this. Because what Satan does is that, you know, I know your heart as well. Even God knows your heart. And you also know yourself. You love Christ. You, you want to enjoy Christ. But problems or people or incidents that happen every day, they make you deviate from that all the time. But even this focus is not something that comes from your own zeal and efforts. Uh, God has to give you the focus. God has to give you the grace uh, to focus on Christ. So I want us to pray about that. Lord, give us your grace. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. The Lord may focus on the mystery of Christ. Not legalism, not unhealthy mysticism, not anything else, but Lord, may I focus on Christ. The Christ that finished everything on the cross. The Christ that died for me and brought the kingdom of God in my life, I would like to focus on that Christ even more. And what about the imprints of your heart? Hold on to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Yeah. You are a new creation. So Lord, those imprinted, imprinted things, those, those roots and my nature as it is, Lord, may you use me like that. Use me as I am for world evangelization. And we're also going to pray for... Uh, evangelism now that God is going to use us uh, to expand his kingdom and to shine the light of Jesus Christ in the world we're going to pray in one voice together and then uh, Elder Han will come forward and continue with, um, uh, you know, with the next song let us pray in one voice